On today's show is a man who I recently saw speak at a congress in London was absolutely blown away by the information that he gave. Now as somebody who's in need of enlightening in the health and fitness area, I was really keen to get him on today's show. So please welcome Joseph McClendon III. Hi Joseph. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for joining me. Now can you share a little bit of your story with our viewers and the people that maybe don't know who you are and where you've come from? From a health standpoint, uh, what, what got me in, in this uh, arena in terms of health and wellness, although there's other facets, I'm, I'm much more than this, uh, was in 1988, my mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And they told us, myself and my sister, that she only had a couple months to live. It was, it was, uh, it was ravaging throughout her intestinal system. And I had gone to, ironically, a seminar where I heard some speakers talk about health and wellness, and I had been on a journey myself to, to you know, take care of myself better. And one of the things that I had heard was that eight to nine times out of ten, when a physician tells the patient that they have a terminal disease, and they tell them they've got X amount of time to live, that patient dies on the day. They tell them 90 days, they die in 90 days. They tell them three months, you know, whatever. And so, as a matter of fact, it was Dr. Deepak Chopra uh, who, who said this advice to us. He said, uh, if, if uh, you ever hear that from a physician about one of your loved ones or about yourself, you tell them, doctor, I appreciate your diagnosis, but I will not accept your verdict. Very long story short, um, I never allowed the physician to tell my mother that uh, she was going to die. And I went on a journey to find out exactly how to take care of our bodies. And by changing her lifestyle and changing her her diet and changing it, pretty much how she lived. She lived another 11 and a half years cancer free. And so the way I was raised was that you take care of, of the people around you and that's you, you give back. And so I, that has, has been my journey of helping other people do that as well. And then of course, taking care of myself uh, so that I can be around to help more people. And from those lessons I learned, that's been the journey that I've been on. Mm -hmm. And I think in this day and age and in the society that we live in at the moment, that we abuse our bodies quite a lot, don't we? When, with the fast food and with everything, and then we wonder why we get sick. You're absolutely right. And the sad fact is that most people have no idea to even be concerned about it. They, people want to lose weight, people want to look better and that kind of thing, but they have no idea what's really going on. It used to be that people knew better. In other words, you, you know, we were taught in school the you know five or four or seven major food groups and all those things. But nowadays, the, the way that our societies have devolved, as far as I'm concerned, food means you go to McDonald's or you go to a fast food. That's what that's what eating is, mm -hmm. and eating is only one aspect of it, by the way. But um, we don't know better to take care of ourselves better. And you're right. People wonder why the major diseases, the cancer, the diabetes, the hypertension, and all those things, they're there for a reason. And they're there because of the way that we are not taking care of ourselves, the way our, our diets and, our, and the way that we think and the way that we move our bodies or don't move our bodies has devolved to a way of living that we've accepted as being that's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. So you say that food is only one part of it. Mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the other parts? There are eight of them. I call them the, the eight pillars of vitality. And vitality is wellness, if you will. Yeah. And they're the air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the thoughts we think, the moves we make, the words we speak, the things we seek, and the sleep we take. Mm -hmm. All of those eight pillars are how our bodies function. And when you adjust any of those areas, any of them, mm -hmm. then you start to change for the better. And being aware of them, and just that's, that's some of the things that we teach, obviously, is, is to help people to make some small, simple, basic changes in each of those areas of their lives. Mm. If you really want to make a difference, you, you do it from the inside out. Yeah, yeah. And would you, I don't like to use the word blame, but do you think an, uh, part of the blame goes to the food manufacturers or to fast food chains? And it used to be that I was able to say that it was instinctive that we knew that the food that we're eating is bad. Mm -hmm. But it's not anymore because we have been hypnotized or, or uh, brainwashed, for lack of a better term, through advertising and the media and so on and so forth, and the food companies themselves, to, to accept the falsity that the food that we're eating is good for us. You know, the example that I gave from stage uh, the other day was, I won't go to the whole thing, but, but the, the mechanism which tells us what is good for us and how much nutrients are in the food that we're eating, and to even crave the foods that are best for us, has been chemically altered in the food that we eat to shut that mechanism off. 
the, the, our, our physiology, that's the food that we put in our mouths, our tongue sends out signals, sends out saliva to break that food down and to send signals to our brain. The chemicals in that food tell our brain, hey, this is good for us, and the good for us, the good for us stuff is not good for us. That's why we eat more of the bad things. The whole concept of supersizing things. You know, I'm old enough to remember when a candy bar was this big. Now they're this big. Yeah. And, but it's not because of the, the, uh, the goodness of the hearts of the people that are making the candy bars that they're giving us more. They know that if they give you more of the chemicals and they give you more of the food that's bad for you, it'll shut that mechanism off and you'll eat more of their food. Mm -hmm. And that food, it, just empty calories. And when I say empty calories, it's not just empty calories that it's not going to be food that's going to build us muscle. It's empty in nutrients, which is what our cells need. Mm -hmm. so, so our bodies are now being, have been trained and conditioned and brainwashed I mean, from here down to believe that the stuff that is the worst for us is the stuff that we crave and the stuff that's good for us. And then the writing's on the wall. Yeah. And would you say it is expensive, though, to eat well? But if you can buy the higher grade food products, then it, it's worth doing? It, it is worth it. Yes, it is a bit more, not that much more expensive. Mm -hmm. I think more people are concerned about the time that it takes to prepare the food yeah. than the expense on the food. The bad for us food has been... Uh, priced at a place that sounds appealing you know for a buck 95 you can get a hamburger or something like that or whatever but the reality is in the long run it's absolutely probably in my opinion 50 percent cheaper to eat the better foods for you than it is the foods that are not so bad for you when a person is is uh eating the foods that are not good for us you have to eat almost twice as much you don't need a lot of food you know, whereas with the, with the junk, people sit down and eat half their weight in food every day of garbage. You know? <laughs> a lot of people eat in excess, don't they, in the sense of even when their stomach tells them that it's full, you just keep eating and eating and just ignore it. Whereas I heard something, I don't know if it's true, that you're to eat what, until you're 80% full. Mm -hmm. Consider this. Your, your stomach is only as big as your fist. <clears throat> Think about it. Put your, your fist on, you know, on your stomach, mm -hmm. and that's as big as your stomach is. It will stretch, but it's not designed and it's not supposed to be stretched at each meal. And anything, any organ, you know, our, our bodies are designed, skin will stretch out, and it'll, it'll become oversized, but it's only that big. So if you look at a plate full of food, is it that big? No. Most of the time, it's, it's much bigger than that. But the reality is, here's a better way of controlling one's intake, and that is to uh, is to find foods that are that are rich in nutrients. Mm -hmm. You eat a banana, you're not going to eat three or four bananas because your tongue says there's enough nutrients in one banana that you don't need anymore, and it shuts the hunger off. So you're not going. Let me only eat enough even to fill my fish. Your brain is going. We don't need any more of this, and you'll push the food away. Yeah. And it's not just about the food, is it? You mentioned a lot of other areas of what we should be doing to, to, to get ourselves feeling well and, mm -hmm. and whole again. Wellness is the body's ability to defend itself and attack disease. Mm -hmm. I've had a cold or a flu or any illness in 26 years. Wow. And I'm around you know, all over the place just like everybody else. I'm not saying not to brag or to boast. I'm just saying that the reality is that your body has everything that it needs to defend itself and attack anything that comes in. So vitality is the ability, and wellness is the ability to, to defend and attack disease, is the ability to generate energy, electricity for lack of a better term. And that's what makes us alive and excited and, and to go after the things that we want and to live. That's what life is all about. Mm -hmm. Um, and then thirdly is that ability to uh, yeah, joke around about this, the tendency to reproduce ourselves, mm -hmm. to reproduce ourselves, not just necessarily, you know, sexually, uh, but, but ourselves to reproduce themselves because that's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Not the ability, not just the ability, but the tendency to, which means that our body, our skin cells, our, our organ cells, everything is likely to be on the journey of every day reproducing themselves and growing and that type of thing. What happens is, you know, a baby, when the baby is born, that's all it's doing is dividing cells and reproducing itself. And the belief is, is that when we get to a certain age, that stops. Yes, it does slow down, but it doesn't stop until you die. So um, what happens is that the, the less attention we pay to our nutrition and the way we take care of ourselves in all eight of those, those areas that I said, then it starts to slow down to a point where it can actually start to reverse, whereas the body is cannibalizing itself and, and that's where the aging process starts and disease process starts. Right. Okay, okay. And you mentioned there about energy, which is a 
a problem that I personally have in that I can sleep for eight hours mm -hmm. and still wake up feeling tired. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a coffee person particularly, so I don't really drink kind of teas and coffees and things, mm -hmm. but I get this, you know, this real lack of energy. Energy is electricity, mm -hmm. it truly is. Mm -hmm. And everything that we do, you know, we depend on electricity like crazy, mm -hmm. but our bodies depend on it as well. And we generate electricity. Each one of our cells generates electricity. To be exact, 308 watts of electricity is what we're always generating mm -hmm. at our peak or when we're supposed to be. But most of us are down right about 120, 130 and that kind of thing. And the reason being is that, first off, it's just like anything that generates electricity. If that generator itself is not operating at its optimum, then it's not going to put out the, the maximum amount of voltage. And our generators are in our cells. Our cells are reliant upon the the energy from the nutrients that we get in. Our, our cells are reliant upon what we put in our mouths, what we breathe in, what we drink, and all those things to be able to generate more energy. So if they're not giving them the fuel to, to do that, then they're going to generate less energy. Sleep is designed for our bodies to shut down to repair and rejuvenate so that when we wake up, we can go on and do it. I sleep about four and a half, maybe five hours a night. And, I'm, and I've got lots of energy, you'd probably tell, yeah. lots of energy all the time. <laughs> and, um, and I've done that for 20 some years now. Yeah. And, um, and, I'm, and by the way, I should tell you this and I should tell you this, I'm not that strict about everything. I'm, I may be strict by most people's standards, but I'm not total vegetarian. I'm not, you know, I, I don't do certain things. I don't drink coffee. I don't eat red meat and some, some things like that. Mm -hmm. But I believe that moderation, I'm not, I don't try to tell anybody you've got to stop doing this, you've got to stop doing that. I'm just saying start doing more of this, which is going to cause you to stop craving as much sugar. It's going to cause you to stop craving all the things that are, that are bad for you. Well, I could talk to you all day. Too, you are absolutely too. fascinating. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me on today's show. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very much. My absolute pleasure.